<laughs> Love his podcast, by the way, if you guys uh, haven't listened to it. Anywho, happy Tuesday. Glad you all made it through Monday. Uh, Meanie here. And I am going to do the tough episode today. The, the elephant in the room that I'm still probably going to dance around because I don't know exactly how to do it. But I get lots of questions all the time about my mom and I. Um, and she's probably going to listen to this because although she doesn't actually talk to me about my podcast, I've heard her talk to others about my podcast and my understanding is that she listens. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Um, but the, the question that came in that was kind of, okay, all right, we, we can talk about this a little bit, um, was, can you talk more about your relationship with your mom? You said that it has always been complicated, but now that you're a mom, did it change your perspective? Having kids helped your relationship with your mom? And this is probably like a 10-part episode, you guys, but um, kind of what I've said in the past, maybe I just do that. Maybe we're like, we're going we're gonna to make this a series. So this is the elephant in the room, session one. Um and maybe what I'll just kind of do is go through um, my version, obviously, of my life. That's the only version I've lived. I'm also old enough in my life to know that it's not the version or, you know, the the only way. Um, everyone who's, you know, engaged in anything has a different perspective. We could all be in the same room and someone would hold up a paint chip and we could all say it was three different colors, green, blue, yellow. That's just human nature. We see things differently. We experience things differently. So while I hate like the words, the verbiage, like this is this is my truth, guys, not the truth. Um, but I think going back to the beginning does make sense to, you know, give some background. But I also don't want to overshare things that, you know, I don't know. We're going to see how this goes, guys. So, born, I was a middle child. I was born, that's how far back we're going, as a middle child. And I think probably I do um, fit a lot of like the typical middle child things. But um, my dad and mom, um, I think she was 25 when she had me. So she was pretty young when they got pregnant. Um, but he was a little bit older. He was, uh, I think, in his residency. I also have a really bad memory, guys. So that's why I'm very clear that this is my version of my memory and or the version of my memory that I have adapted from all the stories I've heard about my life I guess because I think it's at least for me it's kind of hard to tell sometimes between what's a story I've heard so many times that it seems true or like I remember it versus like what are things I actually remember um and I don't have a ton of memories from like before high school, I think, because a lot of it was unpleasant. Um, one of my superpowers is I am very good about compartmentalizing for better or worse. It serves me sometimes. Um, it also is a huge disservice other times. But I'm aware, and that's the first step. Um, so they got divorced when I was three, did not have um, a good relationship. It was just you know, a lot of verbal altercations. Um, they, they did not get along. Like, they fought. It was not good. Um, you know, my dad, my young dad, uh, who was a, a surgeon, definitely had a, a God complex. My mom was also super duper young. Um, and I know I've said this before, like, I get why my dad had one. You want your surgeon to think he can almost kill you with anesthesia, fix you, and then bring you back to life. But it causes a lot of problems in the rest of your life, uh, I think, sometimes. So um, I one of the things that I, I think is a memory is when I was very young, my mom coming home, I, I don't know why, coming home from a run, and that was like a big fight where in my child brain, that was when like, okay, we're getting a divorce and, and things started changing. Um, and it was kind of 
the beginning of what really has been a lot of you know ups and downs in our relationship for the last 35 years. I mean, I'm 38. Um, so the, my parents had a very, very long, very expensive divorce. Um, my dad definitely had the upper hand because he was a surgeon. He had income. He had the stability. Um, my mom was going back to law school when we were little, but I don't remember where she was in that process when, um, when the divorce started or not. But I do remember that my dad ended up, he moved out of the house for a bit. My mom lived in the house. Um, but I believe my dad had custody. I'm almost positive he had custody. Um, and my mom, uh, had Rand who ended up being, you know, my, my second, he was my stepdad. Um, and he lived in like our family home for a while with my mom. And, um, then my dad moved back into the house and we lived when we were with my mom and Randy at another one of his, um, like you know, rental properties, fixer upper things. Um, and I just remember for a long time, like very contentious pickups and drop offs. If, you know, any of you parents were the children of divorce and visitation or have children that, you know, deal, do the visitation, I hope y'all act right for the kids because shit would get wild, you guys. Um, and I, I remember my dad coming to pick us up one time. I mean, they both would like refuse to turn us over at varying points. I'm sure for varying reasons, all of which they thought were the legitimate at the time. And, you know, I, I didn't really understand them. But um, there were plenty of times where it was like, okay, well, we're going to have police presence for this one because it's not amicable or so-and-so is not opening the door or, you know, whatever, whatever that disaster of the day was happening. So while me and my siblings were always very well provided for, um, you know, school, clothes, food, you know, <laughs> all, all those things, um, and we were, you know, middle class life, you know, I'd play soccer and things like that. There was always this kind of like background of what's what's going to happen, like what's going to happen today. Um, and I think the first big uh, kind of separation that my mom and I experienced, um, you know, fast forward a few years. So my dad um, moved back in the house. He was married to another gal. Uh, for about two years. I think it was less than two years. I had a stepbrother for a while who was, I think when I was little, so I was like, you know, four or whatever. He was teen E. He was like 14, 15, something like that. Uh, and I remember he had a dog named like a peanut butter or butterscotch or butter nut, whatever. If you guys get that reference, I love you even more. Um, and his dog got like attacked by wasps at my dad's house and I think it died. Like random stuff like that sticks out in my brain. But so they were only married for like less than two years. Uh, both drank entirely too much and were just like terrible for each other. And she actually ended up buying a house like in our neighborhood. And I remember trick-or-treating and we weren't allowed to go down that street because she lived there. And obviously it was, it was a whole thing. Um, and then my dad's third wife is Cheryl, who's now passed. And she is... Tad's mom, who is, if, if you guys watch the show, is my younger brother. And then Jessica is my younger sister, who is Tad's actual, like, full-blood sister. And she's the mom of Julie, or Bean, who Steve and I fostered when she was young because my, my sister struggled with addiction for a long time. So, um, you know, my dad's third wife was there. And so she was uh, married to Rand, who is my sister, Kelsey. Kelsey is eight years younger than me. And the only kid that my mom had other than me and my two brothers um, with my dad. So she was married to Randy, um, who I, I still see actually every once in a while because he's my sister's dad. Um, but at the time, probably not. I mean, he would probably say he wasn't the best version of himself. Um, but he was the, like the furthest opposite from my dad you could get. And I think that's where my mom wanted to go at the time. Um, and... I don't know. I don't know how much detail it makes sense to get into about why I was not comfortable or didn't like um, being at their home when she was married to Randy. 
other than to say uh, that there was a lot of like punishments that were like now that I am a mom um, just are insane to me. Um, some physical, some more like mental, emotional, but you know, at whatever age I was, 10, 11, 12 at that time, I got to the point where I communicated to, um, I, I don't know if it was to my dad or actually to like, we had a really amazing nanny growing up who was an older woman, Jessie, and she was like, you know, the surrogate mom through everything. Um, and I know she was around then. And I think I had communicated that you're like, I don't want to go over there anymore. I don't like going over there. I don't like what happens when we go over there. I don't like how we're treated. And uh, I think my, my, you know, my dad's side probably handled it the best he could. I want, I want to say that I was in like I, that a conversation was had with my brothers from me saying, this is how I'm feeling. You know, I want you guys to stop going over there. I want to stop going over there and I want us to do it together. So like, you know, it's, it's you know, we're strong. There's strength in numbers. You know, mom will have to make a change. If, if we all don't go, if it's just me, maybe I won't be important enough. You know, whatever, whatever that sounds like. And again, because everyone's experience is different. I don't know if it's because they were the boys or, you know, the fun stuff outweighed the shitty stuff. Because like we would do fun stuff. We would go camping. Um, you know, looking back, this house that, uh, one of the houses, we lived in a bunch of houses with my mom and her second husband. One of the houses, um, there's actually two. One of them I call, uh, like Alice in Wonderland, but with broken glass and knives. Um, and then this other one, it was kind of like in the armpit of the highway, which has actually been renovated and it's a really nice area now. But it, when we were kids, we thought it was amazing. We would go like under the highway overpasses and, we would find what we thought were treasures. Like now I know like these were homeless people's things. Like it was their bedding. It was the things that like they had collected and they were their treasures. But at a young age, we're like, this is so cool. Now as an adult, I'm like, oh my gosh, if my, you know, 10 year old was wandering around under the highways, poking around homeless people's places, I, I don't just, I don't know how I would feel. But we thought it was cool when we were kids, like 100%. Um, and then the other place that they lived in actually is now like a big brewery. It was a used restaurant equipment warehouse. So it was all like concrete. And again, as a kid, it was really, it was really kind of cool. And there was this, it was kind of like a, a, like an actual like dump in the back. I know there was like a broken down boat and a bunch of like old cars and, you know, all, but tons of restaurant equipment that was like more like, you know, scrap level versus the stuff that was inside the warehouse. Um, and I, uh, I uh, like uh, the random memory I have from there, there's two and one involves a lawnmower and bunnies on accident. I don't want to get into that one because it is very sad. But I remember we were like had, having a trash can fire, like a metal trash can fire burning a bunch of the brush in the backyard, which as an adult I get like I just had a brush fire for a bunch of the twigs and leaves on the, one of our properties last week. I didn't have a metal trash can or I would have put it in it. I just, you know, put bricks around it. But having a metal trash can fire and I was putting stuff in it and I rested my wrist down on the edge of the trash can, not really thinking. And to this day, I have a little scar on my wrist. But so it was just very fast and loose. Um, but at that age, it was really fun. So it took a while for me to feel like these things that I saw as fun as a kid um, were no longer were outweighing the, the negative experiences I was having. And my brothers didn't share the sentiment. So they continued going to see my mom and Randy. And, and I didn't. I stayed at my dad's. And, you know, I was the kid in the situation. And I don't necessarily think the adults handled anything from <laughs> marriage through <laughs> us being 20 years old uh, the best they could. But I think as an adult now, it was, you know, how they knew how. So instead of, you know, having a, an adult conversation, which probably wasn't possible at the time between my parents, what happened was, you know, when my mom came to pick us up for a visitation one day, um, the boys went out and I stayed inside and our front door, which is full light glass at my dad's house, uh, the same house you guys saw on the show, that's, that's the house he still lives in, it was locked and I just didn't go out. So, uh, you know, obviously it there comes a, a point where, my mom's confused, like, okay, well, there, there's three of them. There's only two out here. What's going on? 
Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't remember it super clearly, but came back to the door and like, you know, why aren't you coming? What's going on? And me saying some version of, I don't want to come anymore. I don't want to come till you change things with Randy. I, you know, I'm not, I, I don't like it. You know, whatever that 12 year old version of my brain spewed out. Um, and I just remember like I was crying and I think mom was crying and I feel terrible. I feel bad saying these words because if my mom is listening to this, it's she's not the person she was when she married my dad, when she married Randy. Like, I mean, we've all grown so much. I'm a different person than I was five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But the fact is the words she spoke in this moment were very defining for me for a very long time. And I don't think she would have ever said them if she thought that. And we've also had so many conversations about that I, you know, pretty much I need to shit shit or get off the pot and like forgive her for that. And I have. And it's not something I hold on to in a negative or angstful way. But it is something that was very formative for me for a long time. And so as part of our, our story, our life. And she told me, that I was burning bridges that could never be rebuilt. And I'm sure she said a million other things. I'm sure she said, I love you and I want you to be there and a million other things. I'm sure that's what I remember. And that's what stuck with me and affected my interaction with her from my side for a really long time. And I don't think it was a thing that stuck with her. I think, you know, probably when I finally brought it up years later, she's like, I said, what? Um, which just goes to show you how, you know, how different all of our perspectives are and what matters and what sticks and what doesn't. And, you know, like I've said in the past, people can say nice things all day long. It's that one mean thing or hard thing that you're like, oh, well, I remember that. So I'm sure that's what happened. And God, I, I was, I don't know, 12-ish. Um, and so I stopped. I stopped going for visitation. Um, and I honestly don't remember enough like legally how any of it shook out or what that looked like or if it was a legal battle or if it wasn't I think by that time it was like my dad had custody but obviously we had you know every other weekend and Wednesdays with with mom um but that's kind of the last chunk that I remember um until she wasn't married to Randy anymore I don't really I don't really remember much happenings in between those two things um but that was that was the first big um big thing for me at least um and I think when um I think it was like around that time after that that you know my dad was married to his third wife they were married I think for eight years had Tad and Jessica um and again that relationship it did it did not work it did not end well the divorce was very drawn out um the custody battle was very 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 ugly um and I honestly don't remember how my mom's divorce from Randy went um I'm almost positive she I she got custody of my sister um but I don't think it was contentious um and then she remarried a man who uh was again the polar opposite of what she had just been with and um he was he was a judge she you know she was an attorney by this time he was a judge he was he was boring and he was stable and she loved him and it was like okay this makes sense this works I need stability I you know that that whole fun thing that that didn't shake out Kelsey my sister was you know of the age where she needed to be in in like, you know, in a, in a solid school environment. And so basing her being in elementary school, and I'm eight years older than her. Oh, my gosh. School at school is tough. Um, I was in I was in middle school when my mom married her third husband. Um, and my I was still mostly living with my dad and we she had bought a house with her third husband across the street from from the school we were going to go to so I think it was during that time during middle school where my brothers were still doing regular visitation you know she lived across the street where I started 
going back more. But again, I just, I don't really remember how it phased back into having, you know, spending time with her. Um, I think it was just because she was no longer in this second marriage and her third husband was was fine. He was fine. He didn't really exist, <laughs> um, which was a, a huge uh, step up from what I had experienced with her second husband. Um, and so it just kind of slowly went back to normal, I think. And, you know, went through middle school um, and into high school I do know there was a time, God, what happened? Um, I know I'd been living with my dad mostly because I got grounded and my grounding was being grounded to my mom. I was probably in, I don't know, eighth grade, seventh grade. And I had a friend um, that was in, she was a year or two older than me. And I went to the mall with her when LS Ayers was still a thing. That was a long time ago. And... She would like shoplift all the time and I didn't, I didn't need to. I don't think, I mean, a good chunk of the people that shoplift, I don't think need to. I think she got a kick out of it and, you know, convinced me. She's like, just do it. Just try it. Whatever. And I, I did. And I sucked at it and I got caught right away. I tried to steal like a pair of jeans from LS Air and, you know, they took me to the little security room and I don't know if I called my dad and he called my mom Um, because obviously she was an attorney at this point, but there was obviously those conversations and I was grounded and I was grounded to my mom. So like I lived there, I stayed with her. Her grounding was that pretty much you were just weighed on rice. Like you were with her all day, every day, whatever she was doing. And you were writing a handwritten single spaced essay. I don't remember how many pages it had to be, um, about, I think it could be about whatever, but it had to address like the situation while you were grounded as well. Um, so there were some instances like that where where mom was used as punishment. So I, you know, that didn't really help. Um, and then I think there's another time where we were like camping in the backyard and I let like some boys camp with us that I think I got grounded to her again. Um, but she you knows, so she kind of became the, the authoritarian. My dad was... A great, great provider, but not necessarily, um, you know, like the, I think he struggled with uh, like the discipline, like the parenting part of the provider part. Um, So those things are all kind of like mashed together, um, like middle school, high school, um, but ended up, you know, spending more time with her when um, I was into middle school um, and, and into high school, just kind of like regular visitation Um, like my brothers were doing and we were kind of of the age where we could go to either house and come as go as we pleased as long as they kind of knew what we were doing and we were all on the same page Um, so that just kind of went back to status quo Um, and then the next kind of big change for us was um, in high school so my dad in high school um, married Melissa who he's been married to I think it's 22 years now I think they just celebrated 22 years so that one's sticking we're good Um, and they have my two youngest siblings which are oh my god Johnny's 18 and I'm 38 so you know my youngest siblings 20 years younger than I am Um, but uh, so he was with Melissa towards the end of my my high school um and my mom was still married to Mick um and uh I'm trying to think through my junior year of high school so I've worked forever I you know worked my freshman year at my boyfriend's mom's lady dies European body wraps holler um and then all through high school I worked at the Tanco Um, so I went to like a private prep school and so I, you know, would get my classes done. I would leave early. I would go to work. Um, so I thought very responsible and I kind of lived that way at my dad's house for a while. Um, with not what I felt like, you know, everyone thinks when they're a teenager, they have it all figured out. And, you know, I was like, I've got a job. I pay my own way. I'm, you know, I'm good. I know everything there is to know in the world. Like I'm taking care of myself. Um, because my dad had moved jobs to, um, a a hospital in Kentucky. Um, 
I think it was like midway through my junior year and my grandmother was living with us then because she was getting much older and you know couldn't really live by herself so she was the one that was at the house and I just did what I want and the way I think my dad looked at it was as long as you get good grades as long as you're showing up for school and you're maintaining it and you're gonna be able to go to college like the education was uh, the utmost important so I was doing all those things I'm like I work I get straight A's I'm good I also I am not condoning this but I probably drank more alcohol in high school than I ever did in college um I you know we would we we would have parties at our house um it was me and my brothers that were a year older and a year younger so it was like you know there was a, a posse of us um and that was those were kind of my wild years like and when I went into college and saw all my friends while out I'm like y'all are crazy I already did that that's tiring you should stop that it's not as fun as it looks but that was me in high school um I never did drugs but I did drink I drank a lot, a lot of Captain Morgans and probably too many screwdrivers um and maintained a job and got straight A's and I thought I had it all figured out and you know so the next big thing was my mom seeing this happening seeing my dad move to Kentucky and me being with my grandma who really didn't you know have a handle on things um and she took my dad back to court for custody of me and what that did to my brain was oh now you want to parent me you didn't want to be a parent before you didn't want to protect me and take care of me before now you do so f off and uh that's that's what I thought and um it created this whole whirlwind of things that really took us from being you know in a good place you know late middle school into high school um to a really really not good place for a really long time and this will be a forever long episode if I keep going so We'll call those the early years. Um, and I'll record another episode soon with um, the post filing for custody um, and kind of where that led us. Just so you know, it comes full circle. We get very, very close when I'm in college, obviously. We're very close because we made a business together. But we've definitely had a rough road. So that's the first chunk, you guys. Bear with me. It's a lot to spew out in just one episode. So, uh, again, you can click the link in the show notes if you have any questions about anything in this episode or really any question. Y'all know. Y'all know the routine by now. You can ask anything. Um, But I will get back at you with um, round two of this. And until next time, you guys have a lovely day. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.